Hello everybody, I picked up this brand new Jones New York suit for 11 bucks, Lauren Ralph Lauren jacket for six and a half bucks. I'm gonna teach you how I did it, as well as tailor up the slacks on this suit. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cord. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. All right, so here's what I picked up first. Uh, so this is a nice sport coat. Of course, the difference between a sport coat and a suit is the suit has uh, slacks cut from the same material. And you can see this is a uh, Lauren Ralph Lauren. Uh, it's actually made in Canada. That's pretty good. And I think Canada quality is generally pretty good that I've seen. This isn't terribly old. You know, sometimes you can tell if it says something, you know, like the store that's not around anymore. So Macy's, I mean, it's probably made within the last 10, 20 years. The size on this is actually a 38 regular, which is interesting because I normally wear uh, about like a 40 regular. Sometimes I can get 38 regulars if they're a little bit larger to fit. I'll try and show you the size right there. Okay. You see there it says 38 regular. Uh, and it does fit me pretty well. And it's in really nice condition, right? So I don't know what that would be. I mean, you know, 150 bucks or something like that, you know, at the, at the department store. Uh, pretty happy about that. And I'll show it to you on here in a little bit. Um, and this is something else that I'm really happy with. So this suit, this is Jones, New York. Never had one of their suits. I know they're not terribly high quality. When I look at the suit, it's, you know, machine made, you know, there's, no handwork that I can see on it or anything like that. Um, you know, it's probably a, I don't know, $200 price point, something like that. I'll put on the screen here. I'll, I'll look it up to see if they still even sell them. And when I look at the materials on it, uh, you know, you find a materials tag. They don't always. Uh, so here are the materials tag. I don't know if you can tell, uh, but it's basically 75% polyester. Uh, so what this means is this is a cheaper material. It'll be durable. Uh, this is made in Haiti. So, you know, they're not known for high quality. So this is a cheaper suit. But here's the thing, where I'm at, uh, uh, I'm considering this a three season suit. So this would be like fall, winter, spring, because the polyester is gonna be hot. Uh, but it adds to my suit collection. And here's the best thing about it. What do you notice on the back? It's double vented, but you see the stitching there? That's the stitching that keeps the vents closed while the garment is being manufactured. And it still has the manufacturer's tag still on it. So this thing is brand new. Um, and I love this, right, when you're thrifting stuff. See, the pocket is still sewn shut. you got to cut them open when you get them. Uh, so that's a wonderful thing when they're still cut. Uh, they're not cut open yet, right? So I tried it on uh, at the store, and uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how to find some of this kind of stuff. Uh, so it's obviously got the matching suit slacks. Um, this is a 40 regular. Generally speaking with a suit, you're going to have a 6-inch drop. So what does that mean? 6-inch drop, 40 regular, you know, chest size. Generally, you take away six, 34 is, you know, average what the slacks are. I'm about a 35 inch waist, so these are snug. Now, what I'm looking for is if I can let them out, which I've done on a couple other videos, which I'll link in the description, where I've let the suits out. I only need about an inch, you know, maybe two if I could get it on this, the middle of the back seam, right in the middle of the butt. Um, and you see here how much material? It's got some let out. You see that? I can go from here to here right? If you fold this up, you can see it's got enough to add, you know, an inch to do it, but an inch is easy in this, okay? If not, maybe an inch and a half, right? Maybe close to two inches. So that's where I'm going to do that. That's a very easy tailor. Um, the slacks, well, how about I just put this on and I'll show you. So here's how it fits. You can see the chest fits pretty well for off the rack. Uh, I'm not going to take that in at all. The sleeves, I've got a little bit of cuff. I like that. This color, by the way, it's got, uh, um, I'm not sure what you would call this. It does have a, I don't know if you can tell, but it does have a pattern in it, um, a slight, slight pattern in it. To me, it reminds me of when you mow the grass, you know, like professionals mow the grass and you get that little bit of contrast in the color. It's very slight. Uh, this is a dark blue. It's like a grayish blue. It's almost, uh, almost a navy color. I really like it. The shoulders, I think fit perfectly. Um, slacks, I have to suck into buckle uh, to, to fasten. It's not bad, but I think this would bother me a little bit after a couple hours of wear. If I really want to be super comfortable, that's why I'm letting it out, and that's an easy task. Um, let me show you one of the challenges, though. What I'm going to show you next is the back of the collar here. 
How a suit fits, whether it fits well or not, is going to be greatly dependent on your budget and experience. You know, so in other words, I'm not into the bespoke level and stuff like that. You know, so for some people that are into really custom fit suits and things like that, this would be like, oh my gosh, terrible. For other people, they wouldn't even notice. You know, I'm somewhere in between. My, uh, I'll button the top button. Um, do you see? Do you see under the collar? I do get a neck roll, right? So that I don't think I'm able to take out. Uh, let me show you the, the cuffs. This is also an easy tailor, but you see that? I just get a tiny bit of break. So I'm not touching the cuffs either. I would call this, uh, this is kind of a, I think this is kind of a classic fit. And I think it's just right from those regards. So let's get to fixing the back seam here. Now, Romeo here is going to help me uh, give you some tips on how you find stuff like this. Because I do get those comments a lot. You know, I hear that, oh my gosh, you're so lucky, da da da. Well, first of all, let me give you a frame of reference. Uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get. You've heard that adage before. A lot of salespeople will know that adage. But when you're thrifting, that's really what this is all about. It's a numbers game. I got this at Goodwill, uh, both of them at, um, at a Goodwill that I don't usually go to. So number one thing is how many times you're stopping in. I would say I find something, it's really only about one out of six or seven times at any thrift store. Now, number one, does it make a difference of where the thrift store is? In other words, if it's nearer a metropolitan area or a more affluent area, yeah, that does lean towards better items. Um, I've got a pair of woven Allen Edmonds, I think they're Leylands, they're woven uh, loafers. They were almost like literally brand new. Uh, no, they were brand new, they were unworn. I think they sell the sticker on them that I found at a Goodwill, you know, where you don't normally find anything. So think of it as like a little scratch off lotto ticket, you know? Well, you're scratching off the ticket, nothing. Scratching, I don't play lottery, but you know, you're scratching off nothing. Scratching off, well, that was five in a row, I give up. So I generally don't go out thrifting. What I do is while I'm out and about, I know where the stores are. You know, there's a, I don't know, seven, eight, nine of them that I hit, you know, within a, uh, you know, within a 40 minute radius, a 30 minute radius of me, okay? So what I make sure that I do is if I'm gonna be the area, I make sure and hit that store. You know, I'll pop in, sometimes it's literally five minutes and out. What I found though with the suits is that takes longer. You gotta go in and look at each one. You know, you can do it a couple ways. The one way you can do is stop and look inside every pocket of every jacket and look for your something close to your size. For me, I'm looking for 38, 39, 40. Uh, you know, like maybe a 38 long, 40 regular, something in that ballpark. Some of them aren't gonna have a tag where you can't find it and you just gotta put it on. So normally I got this tip actually uh, from the Gentleman's Gazette. The way it's best to go dressed into a thrift store is with a dress shirt, dress slacks, and loafers on. Even though I don't like loafers, I'll tend to wear them more if I know I'm going to the thrift store. That way it's easy to pop them on, pop them off. If you don't have a jacket on, then you can put their jacket on. You don't have to worry about holding your jacket between your knees or putting them on a rack and somebody grabbing it. So go through every one. You could either look at every one, look for your size, look for your size, or just start with the style. Like what I was doing is I'm looking for suits. I'm not really that interested. Even though I bought one, I'm not that interested in more sport coats. So I'm looking suit, 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 suit. Ah, it's a suit, you know, not a suit, not a suit. You know what I mean? I'm looking at suit, suit, oh, suit. In other words, I'm looking for slacks with the jacket. If it is, then I'll grab it. I'll look at the style next, then I'll look at the size. You know, so that's kind of how I've uh, um, done it. And then you can get through you know, a lot of them pretty quickly. Uh, but it just does take a lot of searching to get suits because what you're going to get is old suits, frayed suits, you know, where the pocket is all torn up from people sticking their pens in or their wallet in. You know, then you're going to get ones that have giant collars or, you know, just odd styles from the 1970s that just really aren't relevant, stuff like that, you know. Um, but the more mainstream stuff, the more, you know, classic fit stuff, the more classic styles never go out of style. So, so it's just like I said, stopping in a lot of stores, stopping and often. Remember, when you see my scores, of course I'm highlighting my scores, right? I'm like the gambler showing you all my winnings. When you talk with a gambler, they tell you, do they tell you how much they lost? Generally not, you know, unless they really open up, you get a few beers in them. Does that make sense? You know, so a lot of this is not luck. It's just going in a lot and I travel for work. You know, you'll see my volume of thrifting slowed down during COVID when I started working from home. And now that things open back up, you know, I'm back out more. Does that make sense? I wasn't scratching as many tickets, so to speak, okay? Same is true for shoes. I hope that kind of helps a little bit, okay? A few other tips that'll help. Watch the video I'm gonna link below, uh, Russell the Sartorial Chauffeur 2 part, is if you know what is good and what is bad, 
Okay, so very often if I see something is in my style range, first thing I'm gonna do is look at the label. You know, like I know instantly Jones New York is not a really high level and it's not junk either, you know what I mean? Um, otherwise, if I hadn't done some of this research, like I saw, I didn't, it didn't fit me, but Oxford, O-X-X-F-O-R-D, I would not have known that's a $1,500 suit. You know, I saw one for 30 bucks in a thrift store, you know, stuff like that. So knowing different brands and what their uh, um, relevance is, you know, what their materials and quality is, just to be able to look at a suit, Gentleman's Gazette is great for this. Real Men Real Style is pretty good. I'll link some other videos, but can you turn over a collar? Can you pull open the, the lining here and look for that? Uh, hand stitching you know can you look at the buttonhole and from these things in less than a minute or two can you tell is it fused uh, or half canvas construction in other words just by picking up a suit without looking at the label do you know whether it's high or low quality or not okay you know does it have things like this one does not but like functional cuffs you know those are all things that you want to know so that you know instantly within a few seconds if you're looking at a high quality or low quality piece here's the Lauren Ralph Lauren jacket fits really well uh, and this is going to go pretty well with I'm going to try to show you here I think this will go really well with excuse me Romeo uh, this is a pair of this is a pair of round tree in York pleated slacks right something like that here's a pair of Hagar slacks flat front more your traditional tan uh, khaki color I guess I think that'll go well. Here's another pair of wool slacks. Uh, this one actually does have pleats on the front. I don't know the brand name of this. There is no brand name on it. Eh, I don't know if that goes very well. Try and get in the right light, but I think you get the idea. This is gonna be a pretty versatile jacket. It'll go with a lot of different things. Uh, even though it's a 38, I think it fits pretty well. Really well on the shoulders. The length, here's how you determine the length best way I found these two knuckles first second knuckle on your thumb stand up straight arms relaxed and the length of the jacket should hit between those two knuckles which it does perfectly here six dollars uh, and uh, 50 cents is what this was before tax right and a little wrinkle there from transporting it home in the bag but first step here is to take this uh, flap open it up and because this tag is across both sides, I'm gonna to need to remove that. No, 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 I'm about to get on that thing, but. Okay, I can get on. I got that on tape. <laughs> I've actually gotten decent at doing this alteration. What am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. Opening up. See, this is folded down. Yeah. I'm opening up so I can add in material to the waist. Are you doing that right now? Well, look, are you adding in material right now? No, I'm taking the pants apart right now. There we go. Slowly, methodically, but now you see, there's the flap can be pulled all the way up. And you see how it's just basically sewn together. It's just pinched together like that. So now I can let out, how much can I let out? I can let out, I could do a full two inches on that if I wanted to, do you see that? Okay, I'm back at my cobbling station because I got kicked out of the sewing station. So let's keep going here. So we'll see right there, there's little stitches uh, holding this lining down. I want to go out a little more. Now I'm going to, obviously here's the pockets. I'm going to go down about eight inches so that I can taper that in. I'm trying to be very careful here not to tear the fabric, that's the key. You can see the gap there, right, in the daylight. Yeah. 
once you get a little bit of a split going, it's not too difficult. And it's going to go all the way down. Now you see here where this part has come apart. I'm going to need that fabric sewn together, so I'm going to have to sew that together first. But otherwise, just clean the stitches out of there, and you're in good shape. It's her sewing machine, so I have to wait for her to finish with it, because she just reminded me that it's her, her sewing machine, and if I'm patient, she's going to charge me to use it, so. Well, if you're impatient. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm going the wrong direction, tag of it. Okay, so that was the success uh, the success. See right there, that was the part. You can see my new thread is a little lighter color. That's exactly what I needed. Now we sew this together. I've got it marked. Uh, the pants are inside out. Uh, and I've got them marked. Uh, you see there's somewhere over here, here there's a, a chalk line. I might need to darken that a little bit, but I've got the chalk line there. Let's get it in the machine. For that stuff, it's good. Okay, here we go. Get ready to do the back stitch here. All right, here we go. Well, there's the seam. I'm going to iron it from the back side, uh, especially here starting out, just because this is polyester. I don't want to burn or melt it. It gets that shiny sheen. So I'm going to start from the back side. I want to press the seam flat. So here's a fun part when you have a new suit, right? It's just popping these things off here. Don't wear them with this. Open up the vent. Isn't that gratifying? And there's gonna be another one over here somewhere. Pardon the noise in the background, I do have children. Oh, come on, really? No way. That, I'm looking at, can you see it in the light? That says 350. The 
full retail price on this was $350. Is it 350 dollars Is it three fifty? And a couple more things. Pockets. Right? These are actual pockets. See there in the corner. This is stitched shut much tighter than they usually are. Usually these things are, it's usually a white thread contrasting color. It's usually fairly loose. You know, usually you pop the first one and it just comes out by hand. Functional pocket now. You get the idea. We do the other pocket, don't necessarily need to film that. Don't forget the top pocket here, the lapel pocket. There we go, see it wasn't even stitched all the way across. And here it is all finished up. I'll try to give you a little bit of an overview. Um, I think it fits pretty well. You can see here the waist. I've now got a little bit of slack in it, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and I'm wearing it with that same, uh, you know, checked blue dress shirt that I had on before. And actually, I think I put on those Leyland woven leather loafers. Um, I think that's a good look. A loafer without a tie. You know, for, you know, not super casual occasions, networking, you know, you look nice because of the suit, but not too dressed up like you're trying too much, things like that. So comfortable outfit. Like I said, three season. Um, I probably would avoid wearing this in the middle of summer, especially outside. But there you go. A little digging and you can save a ton of money.